So good afternoon, Amit. Welcome to Movie Talkies. Uh, before we start talking about Monsoon Shootout, tell us the journey of the film. How was it conceived? How did the whole thing happen? Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, the the film, I would say, uh, started with a single visual. Uh, it was about a uh, about a guy with a gun in his hand, and it's raining. And uh, initially, the idea was that it's a somebody who's about to become a gangster. and it's his first kind of assassination and he's compelled by circumstances to shoot but his conscience is telling him not to shoot and that's why he's standing there and he has this dilemma do i shoot do i not shoot uh that's kind of the visual that started the, the whole thing somewhere along the along the journey uh, it became from a gangster it became a cop we have a first time cop and you think that you know even cops have to kill people and it always fascinated me how as human beings we say we are civilized animals and yet we are capable of killing each other So I always thought that you know it must take some thinking, some doing before, as a human being, you can kill another human being. And so I was quite fascinated with that idea. How does your conscience work? How does your what does your conscience tell you finally that you say, okay, fine, I can kill this guy now? And obviously, in certain situations like this, it it happens in a fraction of a second. You're standing there, and suddenly you have to decide what do you do. Um, so that's kind of where this this idea of of the film started off from. So you think like, okay, so. uh and i think the other thing that kind of joined in was the fact that i f- i find uh, um kind of uh, making decisions very traumatic so the idea of this cop with a gun uh, in the rain uh joined with the fact that i find taking decisions very difficult life and death decisions i don't have in my life but you know life changing decisions uh i mean i was working in american express at one point and i thought i want to quit this and i want to get into films and this whole dilemma that okay do i quit do i not quit if i stick on what will my future be like if i quit what could my future be like this idea of standing at a point and wondering what one path could lead to or what the other path could lead to in order to decide what to do uh i found it very fascinating i thought that it's probably an experience that all of us have in some way or the other in some intensity or the other uh and i thought it would be worth making a movie about that and i think so there Uh, the idea of this cop standing with a gun i thought let me extrapolate that and he stands there and he imagines so if i shoot the guy what would happen and hence do i want to shoot him or not and if i don't shoot the guy what would happen and hence do i shoot him do i not so you know it all came kind of uh, the structure of the film came organically from the point of you know the the point of let's say inception of the idea that what do you do when you face with a situation like that so would you describe monsoon shootout as a noir thriller or a philosophical film It's very funny because uh, I would call it a philosophical film hidden inside a noir thriller. So when you watch it, it's a great ride. I mean, you know, if you don't want to think philosophical side of it, it's cool. It's great ride, got great actors, great visuals, and uh, um, you know, it's uh, it's got a great twist at the end. So you know, you really watch till the end, and you think, okay, it's taken me on a nice ride, and I'm ready to go home. And you just wait till the ending, and suddenly you think, oh my god, this is like very really cool. So it's a film that can really hit you quite hard. uh other than that of course i've planted the philosophical side in it which is if you want to take that you can take that if you don't want to take that you don't have to take that but i think everybody will come away from the film thinking about the choices of their life and wondering that you know okay if i had done that what would have happened and uh, because i think it's a universal thing so so like you said the film revolves around the choices that we make and what prompts us to make certain choices but why a crime thriller could you have done it with any other genre uh could have and probably somebody else could have made a film like that and might have been uh, you know also a, a good film it's just that uh, that's the thing that came to my mind first and uh, um like for example i made the bypass you know a short film mm. in the desert with nawaz and irfan and it has violence in it and uh, um it's not that i searched that okay i want to make a violent story let me find something violent but it's just the idea that kind of bubbled inside from me and that's what i made um same with monsoon shoot out that this idea of this guy standing in the gun i still don't know where i got that image from of a guy standing in the gun with the rain uh, uh, with a gun in the rain i don't know where that visual came from but that's what came to my mind and uh, somewhere i think the uh, the capability of uh, humans to perpetrate violence on other humans i think that fascinates me somehow okay how was the casting decided see nawaz i'd worked with before mm. so it was easy for me to say okay i worked with you on bypass put you in here uh, vijay was a really uh, amazing uh, thing because uh, 
my associate director was from FTI, uh, Reema Bora. She is an Assamese filmmaker now. Uh, she had studied with Vijay Verma at FTI, and so she recommended him. He came home. I opened the door. I looked into his eyes, and I thought, "This is my guy." And uh, but everybody around me, you know, the producers and every, my whole team, everyone was like, "Are you sure this guy?" And so it's one thing to say, "Okay, I see in your eyes the guy I want," but it's another to say, "And now you have to give me that performance so that I believe that this is the guy I thought I saw in your eyes." I think that was, I think it must have been a torture for Vijay because it went like, off, I don't know, one, one and a half years, 40, 50 auditions and he was like, ask me in the end, what different do you want me to do? I said, don't worry, just keep doing it. Because I had seen the character in his eyes already, I'm kind of confident that I'm going to get there. It'll take some time, but I'll get there. And at some point, I will reach the point and say, okay, yeah, I got it. Um, luckily, that point happened before the, the shoot of the film and, you know, and then we locked him in. Um, Tanishta I had worked with before on a film called Shadows of Time, uh, a Bengali, uh, Bengali film made by a German director. So I knew her from there, I knew she could carry off this role. Uh, Neeraj Kabi, I was helping a friend of mine uh, on a film uh, called Gandhi of the Month. So he was casting for that, Neeraj had come in for a reading. And the moment I saw him, I said, okay, he's the guy. Uh, Chotu, the kid, we had to find, uh, I, didn't, I wasn't happy with all the actors that I was presented. And I told my associate, by the time I was shooting this uh, uh, Gul, she was another uh, uh, FTI friend. Um, I told her to get all the juniors, the kids, uh, and uh, just go through them and shortlist 10 of them. So we had already started shooting by then. I, was not, I didn't have a, a kid. And so she selected these people. She shortlisted 10 of them. I went and had a look at them and, you know, I got this kid who's again, his eyes, you know, just tell me what I, I wanted to see. Um, I think that's uh, pretty much. I mean, my my uncle is there in the film. My my mama ji is uh, he was there in the bypass at the Dhabawala, okay. and he's there in Monsoon as a builder. And he's the reason I got into films. I mean, I was working in American Express at one point, and I thought, do I quit? Do I not quit? And uh, he was there, and he said, yeah, just quit. We'll we'll see. You know, chodo dekhlenge. It's not like he had a plan for me, but just that, that those words were so inspiring. That okay, there's somebody who trusts me that I will do something in this field. Fine, I'll quit. So uh, I make it a point to put him in everything that I do. Uh, I torture him still because I audition him still. But <laughs> um, so it took a long time for you to make this role. What were the difficulties that you faced over the period of time? See, I think uh, I find writing very traumatic. So the writing itself was very traumatic. It's uh, it's uh, uh, I'd call it a necessary evil because <laughs> you need that script. But it's such a nightmare writing it and getting it the way you want to, and you know, going through your ghosts when you're writing it. So that, I started, uh, I signed the deal for development with the UK Film Council in uh, 2004 and I wrote for four years and then I started looking for finance. So that's the first part of the journey was the writing. Second part of the journey was trying to finance the film, um, which was difficult because I wanted to make the film in a certain way. And I think if I was more desperate to make the film, I might have compromised on certain things and said, okay, fine, I won't have the rain, fine, I'll cast this guy, fine, I'll do it like this, I'll shoot in 30 days. But that was one thing I was clear about. I didn't want to compromise on the kind of film I wanted to make. And I said, okay, you know what, I'm going to take the time. It takes two years to find the right people. I will take two years. They'll be fine. The people who trust this film and trust me to do this film. And uh, uh, luckily, over the course of time, uh, we found uh, the right people. And uh, when Anurag came on board, I, I met him. And the first time I said to him, I said, listen, I just have a concern that I'm a director. I have a vision. You're also a director, apart from being a producer. And you have a vision. So how is this going to work? And he was really cool. He said, listen, I've seen Bypass. I know you know how to make a movie. You just go and make the movie you want. And it was cool. No, not like one drop of saying, oh, do this, do that. He just left me alone to make the film. Um, so that was really good. The making of it, I think, uh, the really tough thing was the rain, which for me is another character in the film. Uh, it was, again, important for me. Just like I'm very particular about the performances and the casting, because I want the performances to look real. I wanted the rain to look real and I didn't want to kind of compromise on that and uh, so sometimes I would spend three, four hours uh, rehearsing with the rain to make sure the rain is right before I even start shooting. Uh, so I think that was a bit difficult and uh, then after that uh, uh, on the edit we edited it, uh, we got it uh, uh, like let's say a hundred minute film and I was still like okay everything is there. But it's still not what I had in my mind. So there's something that's, you know, another touch we need to do to it. 
So Atanu, my editor, was like, so what do you want to do to it? I said, that's the problem. I don't know exactly what I want, but I know that this is not it. So maybe we need to get an outside, you know, a fresh perspective. So Asif Kapadia, who's one of the exec producers on the film, he, um, uh, he suggested his editor who would cut uh, Irfan's first film, The Warrior, which was Asif's first film. And so she had a look at it and she cut off 10 minutes of the film without losing a single scene, just a little tripping here and there and suddenly it became the film that I wanted to. So that was a bit of a journey. Of course, after finishing the film in 2013, it's like, you know, it's, it's playing to standing ovation in Cannes, it's traveling around the world. And like, of course, somewhere you want to release in India. And uh, uh, I think that was another difficult part of the journey, finding the right people who would trust in the film to release it. Everybody be sure it was, oh, we love the film, we'll do this, we'll release it, we'll do it. Uh, finally, nothing used to happen because they always think, well, the Indian audience is not really ready for something like this. Uh, I think now, let's say over the last couple of years, content-driven films have been releasing and have been doing well at the box office, uh, outside the usual star system, formula kind of storytelling. And so I think people and the industry has gained more confidence in films like this and that the Indian audience is kind of ready for this. I personally feel the Indian audience has been always ready for this. I, I don't think if the film would have come out in 2013, they would not have been ready. Because I find it very weird when we say Indian audience, which is like, you know, international audience like this and Indian audience like this. I mean, I'm an Indian, I made the film. So why can't Indians enjoy the film or appreciate the film? But fair enough, whenever the circumstances are right and everybody thinks this is right, the film is releasing and uh, I think it's great. Um, I think the audiences here are finally going to get to see, I think, a, a film that is very exciting, that has a new concept, something new and yet it's an exciting film to watch with great performances and uh, twists at the end. So, But do you still believe that the film dynamics works as per the known face of the actor as we say? Like for example, had Nawaz not been in this film, had there been some other actor, would Mansoon should have got the kind of publicity that it's getting now? Uh, it's very difficult to say because it's like this is what the, the film is about that you know if you don't do this what happens you know you can fantasize I can think you know what if I had not taken Nawaz for that role and I would have taken somebody else but on the other hand you could always say oh what if you take an Irfan and Nawaz and whatever Aishman Kurana I mean I don't know you can you never know which way you would have gone so it's very difficult to wonder what would have happened without a Nawaz at the same time I feel that the the power of the film is not in just an individual's performance. I think uh, the, the, uh, it's everybody who gets together and the way the script is brought to life by all of these uh, uh, actors is, I think, what makes the film what it is. And uh, I think having Nawaz in it is great for us because he has a huge fan base and those people will definitely come for the movie because, you know, it's a Nawaz film, they'll come for the, for the film. Uh, of course, the good thing is they'll come for the film thinking it's a Nawaz film and then when they come, they'll realize, okay, it's more than just an Nawaz film. It's, it's also something very different. And I think they'll carry away much more than what they came for. Uh, so, yeah, that's... So, you know, the uh, Bollywood or the Hindi film industry, as we call it, doesn't have a very rich history of Noah films. Why do you think that is the case? Why do I think that's the case? Um, I actually have no idea why, why we don't have Noah films. I mean, I think... Maybe it's just to do with the, let's say, if you look at the history of the place, uh, let's say noir films coming out of America mm. were rooted in the Great Depression mm -hmm. and in all those gangsters that came out from, you know, uh, illegal, you know, bootlegging and all that stuff. So that was part of their lore, part of their lives. And I think for us, by and large, a country is full of middle class lives, which are where you know, family dramas and, you know, um, tensions with the in-laws and, you know, uh, love has been a taboo subject for a long time and I think so it's very exciting to see love on screen because in our normal lives you, you, you don't get to interact with girls sometimes you know you're like okay and you know and uh, uh, I think that's there's a reason why the cinema of a place is of a certain kind and uh, uh, at the same time uh, this is a genre that I enjoy watching and I know a lot of my friends enjoy watching and so um, uh, it's something, like I said about the bypass also, that it's just something that instinctively came to me. It's not like I chose that I will make this kind of films. Uh, Rajiv Ravi, my cameraman, he's like my old time friend from FTI. He keeps asking that, like, what's with you and violence? Like, why are you so fascinated by violence? Did you have a disturbed childhood or something? And I'm like, um, I have no idea, man. I mean, I know I didn't have a disturbed childhood, but 
Why does violence fascinate me? I have no idea. I think it's cinematic. I mean, violence is definitely cinematic. There's no doubt about that. Mm-hmm. Um, Which are your favorite Noah films, both here and abroad? Uh, here, I would say, I think, uh, I mean, if you would consider Satya Noir, I think I, I love Satya. If you talk about thrillers, I love Parinda also. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Johnny Gaddar was not too bad. Uh, and outside, um, I mean, Inception is a different kind of noir, but I loved Inception. I love the way they play with time. I, I love anything that kind of uh, plays with established kind of uh, norms and cliches and, and fools around with them. I love Westerns. I love Sergio Leone films, uh, Once Upon a Time in the West. I mean, amazing film, amazing beginning. The way they, he uses his characters, the faces he casts, the landscape, uh, and it's amazing. Scorsese films, obviously. Um, Miller's Crossing, an amazing film. Uh, yeah. What are your upcoming projects now? I am right now working on a show for Amazon Prime. Okay. It's uh, called The Last Hour. It's like a supernatural thriller slash taboo love story. Uh, so we're writing, me and my wife, Anupama, we're co-writing right now. And then uh, hopefully by towards the end of next year, we'll be shooting it. So that's, that's what I'm working on right now. Tell me something, at Man- let's say, uh, say hypothetically, if Manzoon Shootout is to be remade in Hollywood, which actors would you like to play those roles that you have? <laughs> uh, that's a very funny question. Which actors would I want to cast as the lead? I think I might cast Russell Crowe as uh, the Neeraj Kabi character. Okay. And I might cast... Uh, um, uh, um, uh, hmm, young... Not James Franco, I would... Very tough call now. I mean, I would love to cast the younger Leonardo DiCaprio in that that okay. role, but obviously everybody will say that greed. Um, I mean, off the top of my head, I can't think of you know James McAvoy. I think mm. again he's older now, but slightly younger guy. Or when he was a bit younger, I think I loved him. I really loved him. I would love to cast him uh, as uh, Vijay's character. Okay. Um, yeah. And Nawaz. Hmm, Nawaz's character. Interesting. Off the top of my head, I can't think of anyone right now. You know what? Joachim Phoenix. Okay. Yeah, I think I would cast him. I think he would be amazing. Yeah. Okay. I know he's given up acting now, so, but uh, yeah. I hope one day I can, you know, work with him in something. Okay. Thanks a lot, Amit, for chatting with us. Had a cool, great job. No thank you so much. Wonderful. Thanks for having me. Okay.